Come on, man. <laughs> What's up, man? Come on, man. It's just so big time, man. SpongeBob and everything in the background, man. Look, when you when you got a wife that do this for a living, she she got the ring light, she got everything. Come, you know, you got the tie dye on, trying to compliment your skin tone. I don't understand what's going on right now. Oh, oh, see, and this is this is also the harsh. So you got a special guest. You ain't tell me he was gonna be on <laughs> with us. <laughs> On oh, purpose. He, he, I like he, it. He, he said, John, you want to come talk about the, the guy you hit the most in, in your CFL career? <laughs> I was like, yeah, and me, and me might as well. <laughs> we move the change. You hear what I'm saying? Real players can relate because they the ones that was playing. Be great. Be Just great. wait. Yeah. We be really in the field. Really. Now we really on the mic. Speaking truly how we feel. Damn. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing started, man. I appreciate y'all coming on, man. Like I said, man, it's... Uh, this move to change, man, is about diversity and inclusion, but at the same extent, man, it's about real stories, man. It's about real life. Um, and it's also about, you know, giving guys advice and giving guys a, a way to prepare for whether that's athletics, whether that's away from athletics, um, just giving them a real perspective. Um, I brought you guys on because obviously, man, you guys had a, a longstanding career, a successful career at that. Um, but you guys also have perspectives and I think, honestly, pointers on things that happen during careers. Um, and especially for guys that maybe going into their career um, that maybe don't have the insight, maybe don't have the guidance. You know, some of us, you know, came off on a better end as far as uh, being able to have a long enough to a long enough career to go through trial and error. Where some guys only got two, three years maybe to try to figure it out, and then that's it. Um, so, you know, for me at this segment, um, this is episode five, and I want to touch on, you know, just some of the things that you know all of us endured during playing um, in the time of our career. I think guys need to have some perspective. I think the world needs to have some perspective because I think there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to the athlete, regardless of level. I just think there's a lot of misconceptions. I think there's a lot of uh, bad perspective um, and unreal perspective, should I say as well, when it comes to the athlete. So um, first I want to touch on this though. Obviously there's this whole George Floyd thing going on right now, you know, obviously trial wise and so forth. I, I, I got to throw it in there before we really get started. Cause I mean, obviously this is something that obviously was a staple of uh, getting a lot of this, uh, a lot of this discussion, a lot of things started, man. Man, what's your perspective on a lot of this man that's going on right now? Because the trial alone, man, for me, it's just, <laughs> I mean, I, I got my own perspective of it. I have my own perspective of how long and why it's even taking place or, you know, the things that are happening in between it, but even more so the things that are coming out and it's either a make or break it for me. Like what they choose to do with the information, if it doesn't go to the level that it should, then to me, like the exposure was worth nothing. Like right. it doesn't mean anything. Um, so, man, if you guys want to touch on it real quick before we really get started, man, I would appreciate it, man. You know, Kev, if you want to start first, man, go ahead. Well, me personally, I, I think it's it's who America is. I think this is all this stuff that's been happening these past couple of years is really what America was built on. Is who we were, who America really was. And I think these things now, just because of the, the information uh, era that we're in right now, where everything's videotaped, everything's recorded, it's just getting out to everybody in mass. Everybody's being able to watch it at the same time. You know, um, back in the day, I remember, I mean, you couldn't, I didn't know what went on in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know what went on, you know, in, in Chicago, my neighbor in, you know, in Illinois, my neighboring state. But now you know exactly what's going on in every state um, across America um, and even across the world uh, for, for things like this to happen. So I think it's, it's really a I mean, it's America looking at itself saying like, like this is who we are, you know, and I think sometimes. Individuals. I said what is like, I think individuals are afraid to accept, like when you say I'm a proud American but that's not how I am. It don't matter. That's not how, how you are. But as a whole, this is who we are. We are America. This, and, and this is, we are, we're sexist. Uh, we're racist. We're, uh, it, I don't want the next man to, to have what I have. I just want to be the only person, you know, driving this type of car. And it happens throughout, throughout America. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't even matter what race, but I, well, what I will say is this George Floyd thing has opened, I think, has opened my eyes to uh, to capitalize on things that you can while you can. You know, some people say, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't change things overnight. No, you can't. 
but I can capitalize while I have the ability to right now. And that's, that's kind of what the position that I'm in right now, as far as the school that I'm at, um, I work in admissions, um, uh, with, uh, community outreach and diversity. So, but it's a predominantly white school. So my biggest thing was to try to, uh, but it's a very good school. And I, when I say good school, I mean academically and athletically. So my thing was to expose as many diverse individuals who wouldn't have never ever thought of going to this school, try to expose them to what's going on here. So, you know, they can get something out of life. They can push forward and be successful. But that's what this George Floyd thing has, has opened my eyes to is try to take advantage of your, try to take advantage of an opportunity uh, when you have it. Well, what you yeah, and, and yeah, and that's a, that's a, that's one standpoint. I'm just gonna go from the pessimistic standpoint of like Black Americans are feeling like here we go again. You know, it's this is Rodney King. This is you know the mid, the hundreds of of other cases that we've seen that that be highly publicized. But it, are we gonna get the right outcome? Or is the is the desired outcome gonna gonna come? And and I think that's what a lot of people are waiting on right now. You're hearing all this information, the bad stuff. They're talking about Floyd and, and all of this. And then you hear the bad stuff. They talk about the police officers. But uh, the Black America is waiting for the results because that's going to determine their next move. Because I just feel like a lot of people are tired of uh, what's been happening. And, and, and they, they, they want to change. They hear everybody say they're going to change, but they, they see no change. So. I mean, it, it, it's going to be I, – I just think a lot of stuff going to happen whenever this case is resolved. But you remember, that I think people felt that exact same way when that whole – when the whole Rodney King thing happened and they didn't charge him and that big-ass riot happened. Yeah. It's kind of like Amer- – that's what I'm saying. Like, this is America. Like, we've, yeah. we've seen this before, this- but we were just younger. It's now yeah. like us seeing it as adults, but back, back then we seen it as youngins. And really didn't put two and two together. We didn't, we didn't say, you know, like, wow, like, like really, like what, what the hell is really going on? Like now mm-hmm. we can say that because I think we've experienced so much, but this is, this, this is, a, it's recycled. It's the same exact thing that happened with Rodney King. Everybody glued into that TV, waiting to see if them cops was going to get charged for beating them. And they got off, you know? And so that's why I say where it's like, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Bo when he say, when he say like black America is like, we're tired of this, but that's what I'm saying. Like at, at this point, it's like, we need to do something. Stop waiting on, stop waiting on them to like fix everything for us and take advantage of this opportunity. Take advantage of this. Everybody is trying to hire a diversity and inclusion uh, impact equity person for they, for they, um, for they corporation. Take advantage of it. We have to, we have to be better at, taking the opportunity and capitalizing on it without waiting for somebody else to do it. I mean, we all three of us have actually, that's what our life has been like for the last umpteenth years that we've been playing sports since we was little is we've been trying to take advantage of the opportunity to get where we wanted to, where we wanted to get to. And we did it. We all three of us have have gotten to that point that we, when we were little said, man, this is where I want to be. Now we just got to switch the switch the gears and just do it in a whole nother arena, you know, in life. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, first, let me piggyback back. I didn't even get a chance to even introduce y'all because we already got into it all so fast. So <laughs> man, man, this is Blue to Change, man. This is a show about diversity and inclusion, man. Um, I got two special guests with me, man. First off, man, I got Kevin Glenn, um, quarterback, played for 2,000 years, uh, threw for over 50,000 yards. <laughs> All-star, Tom Paid Award winner for community service, uh, man, MOP candidate. I mean, has done it all, um, has a lot of experience. But like I said, more so, like I said, I respect him as a father and as a man. So that's why I wanted him on here today. Uh, John Bowman, uh, 2,000 sacks, top, you know, top and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> CFL All-Star 25 times, two-time Grey Cup champion, all these other things. He felt like he should have won more, but we ain't going to go there. Uh, but hey, let's also, not forget yeah. to mention. Hey, no, they ain't doing that. that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Kevin Glenn's the first person to put to be registered for all nine teams. All nine. That's all amazing. Nine. 
Hey, all all nine teams. Teams. That's, 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 all that's a Hall of Fame category by itself. <laughs> It's, it's only one of me. It's only one, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So where's the equity in that? <laughs> hey, well, Sean Lemon, I think in Odell Willis, <laughs> I'm not here, buddy. I think coming. Be two more. Your boy's coming. You have, no, have a three-man team. <laughs> <laughs> no, they coming for sure. But, nah, uh, like I said, man, Bo been around for a while. But also, man, the big thing is uh, he's also part of CFLPA. So, you know, it's definitely uh, – a big thing for us to be able to shed light from that perspective as well, because all three of us have been a part of that too. And, you know, I think the CFLPA um, presents an opportunity for us to see things from a different perspective. You know, when you're just being a player and you're just going, you're just going and your career is flying fast, you're not seeing the dynamics that's happening around you. And I think that's very big for um, guys like myself and these other two to be able to, you know, shed some light and shed some perspective on that because a lot of guys from the outside in don't understand, you know, they don't understand the business model. They don't understand, uh, you know, how those things take place. Um, you know, they don't understand even the money aspect alone um, and the greed behind it. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that take place within that. But, you know, just to go into the, just the career aspect, you know, alone. Um, man, you know, when you guys came into you guys' rookie year, like, what was that like, you know what I'm saying, for you guys? Like, were you guys, you know, when, how much did you know about the CFL? You know what I'm saying, from a first standpoint, you know, how much did you know, how much did you see? But also to the same extent, like, yeah, I mean, just the excitement level alone, just be able to, you know, extend your career outside of college, you know, regardless of whatever NFL expectations you had or anything like that. What was that like, if you can remember? Because I know that's back in the day for both of y'all, you know, but both of y'all up there, <laughs> y'all up there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? About 20, you know, almost 15, 20 years ago. But outside of that, like, like I said, for what you can remember, though, like, what was that like, though, for you guys, man? Well, for me... I was like, I had never heard of CFL before. Like, just to be honest, you mm -hmm. know, I grew up in North Carolina. We thought Canada was across the world. Um, I came up in 06. I, I had no expectations. Like, I didn't know whether I was going to make the team. I didn't know it was 12 people in the field. I didn't know the receivers got a running start. I'm calling false start every play. So, like, like, I just went out and competed. Like Kevin said earlier, you just go – Make take advantage of opportunities. I didn't know I had to be a yard off the ball. I just got up there to say, "Hey, back up some," you know what I mean, <laughs> and go rush rush the quarterback. And that was my thing. Like, just go take advantage of what you know. And I was blessed, like, actually, to be a part, be around a lot of guys who are in the Hall of Fame or on the precipice of the Hall of Fame. You know, the ACs, the Coons, you know what I mean, Stu, and those kind of guys. And, and so they. Like, I came into a great leadership, like, so I was allowed to just uh, be free a little bit and, and just have fun. Um, but, like, like you said, I had never, I had never been to Canada. I never been outside the country. Money aspect, I didn't know it was ever heard of an exchange rate before in my life. So I'm losing 20 cents on my dollar. I, like, I'm like, what's going on? So, but it was definitely a, a, a slap in the face. Like, it was, but it was fun. Like, we didn't, I didn't know any better. Um, I was my first time living, first time out of the country, so it was it was eye opening. But I can't say like the money was worse then, but the 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 it was better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we had more fun, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, now, I, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, so when I came into the league, I did know about the CFL. It's funny because in high school we used to go because I'm living in Detroit. We used to go across the border to Windsor and play a high school team in, in Canada. But we would only use – we would use the 12-man, but we wouldn't use the run and start. And then we would play on the CFL field. Um, so I, I was kind of familiar with it, watched a couple of great cups growing up when Damon Allen was kind of playing in it. Uh, so I was familiar with it, but still the whole part of, like, playing professional football, like literally getting paid to do something that you did as a kid for free, Cause you just wanted to be around your boys. That's what kind of like hit me when I, when I got that like first check, like they was like here, you know, and I was in Saskatchewan at the time. So um, I was kind of nervous because I didn't, I didn't understand the whole ratio thing. You know, I just knew that there were going to be cuts. And at the end of the day, I didn't know like, Oh, they keep three quarterbacks. I wasn't, you know, privy of the, the way that the roster structured. So every day, um, Omar Morgan, I never forget this. Omar Morgan, Omar Evans, we was all 
we, we would sit in the cafeteria after we eat. We had some great coaches in Danny Barrett because he would let us at sometimes get the evenings off to watch the uh, finals. You know, finals, the NBA mm-hmm. finals always went on during training camp. So we were sitting there mm-hmm. one day, and I'm like stressing, like, man, I'm about to go. I'm about to get sent home. They got final cuts. And all my morning kept on some, boy, what you mean you about to get sent home? I'm like, I'm about to get sent home, man. They about to, they sent them other quarterbacks home. He like, man, there's only three of y'all. You made the team, bro. You don't have to worry about nothing right now. There's three of y'all left. All three of y'all made the, made the team, you know. But I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't understand that part about it. I'm thinking they just going to cut you, you know. So um, that was kind of my, like, initial – CFL experience with the whole like being a professional athlete, not understanding the, the 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 roster structure, and basically, you know, hoping I you know I didn't want to get sent home on that plane going back to Detroit. Man, all my family and everything was excited for you. I didn't want to come back saying I you know I got cut. So, uh, <laughs> it was it was it was pretty cool, man. That that my my rookie year. Yeah, no, I think like you uh, touched on ball. Like I said, man, having the proper people around you to guide you. Like I said, man, that's the biggest thing. Cause like even for myself, like I had Bear Miles, you know what I'm saying, and Mark Washington and you know, sitting in from G Roy, even offensively and so forth. So I had guys that obviously were at the peak of their game. Um, so you know, for them to try to build me up and try to mold me and so forth, man, that was huge for me, even just understanding the game alone. Um, one aspect though that I feel like don't doesn't get touched on enough is the fact that obviously a lot of guys end up coming up there straight from college. Um, what is your perspective on how much college actually prepares you for professionalism? I mean, I, and I'm talking about like not even just being the athlete, like you how much does college that? prepare you? I'm talking about the whole perspective. Cause I feel like this is a part that's lacking a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like college can prepare you to go run forties, bench press, <laughs> play football. But then there's the other aspect of being a professional athlete that I feel like doesn't get accounted for. And I don't feel like sometimes a lot of colleges prepare their guys well enough you know what I'm saying, for that other aspect. And then now we're learning about trial and error, getting lumps down the road and so forth. How much did you feel prepared for your, you know what I'm saying, obviously for your opportunity? And also to the same extent, you know, was that, you know, coming from a college or was that coming from just the people around you? Like, what is your perspective on that? College doesn't prepare you at all for professionalism. Not not in athleticism, not an athlete. Because if they did, they would teach you finances. They would teach you, you know, how to set up your bank account. My coach knew I was coming to, to Canada. He would have told me about the ratio. You know, you set aside your seniors. You say, hey, I know you guys are looking to go pro. Here's the pro days and this and that and, and, and whatever. And this, if you go to Canada, here's set up your bank account so you can just do a quick transfer and stuff like that. So in and, and that aspect, even if you stay in the, in the, in the back home in, in the NBA or whatever, they don't expect people to, make, to play professional sports. There's no setup in college to to assist any athletes who are looking to further their career, and, 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 and which what guys have it easier now, I guess, is that the, the eyes of the world are open. Like you were saying earlier, Kevin, like everybody's looking at everything everybody does. Mm-hmm. So now coaches and ads they got to be more. They have to help these kids out a lot more than what they did when we were playing. They they got a they got programs set up uh, to assist players to transition players or you know what I mean if you go to the league and you get cut you get to come back to school kind of things whereas back in our days I don't think I don't think we had that so like now it's better but I can honestly say like I got no preparation financially like like how to calculate or how to save or do this and do that for for anything other than and and when you're in college your baby like like I played D2 I'm not saying that we got it handed to us but my schedule was laid out I knew I had to go to class I knew I had morning meetings I knew I had eight o'clock class I knew I had to go work out and that's was that like they don't they don't show you how to transition to freedom where you got to do it yourself oh yeah uh, definitely and it don't matter if you come from D2 I know guys that went to University of Michigan uh that came out of 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 college played in the CFL and didn't know what an exchange rate was, didn't know how to set the bank account up. And it was just, we had to, we had to learn, learn by trial and error, or we had to find somebody in Canada that was willing to take the time mm-hmm. to school us on really what was going on, whether it was the bank account thing, like you said, the, the, uh, the transition, you know, of just being, like you said, of being a pro, 
you know, type of thing. But it doesn't it doesn't set you up. I think it's the same thing with high school. A lot of sometimes high schools don't set you up for college, you know, and um, and that's why. I, I, I think that's why a lot of times, like you said, people just I know it's already a small percentage of individuals who do make it. But my thing is, is if a, if a if a student or a player of mine says this is what he wants to do, I'm not going to count him out. I'm going to help him. I'm going to say, hey, this is what you do as far as setting up a bank account. Uh, I am going to help you and coach you up in um, and sometimes even the, the laws of Canada and how you tra- how you travel. You need a passport, all that kind of stuff, because some of these guys don't know this kind of stuff. So um, even and even if it was them staying in the U.S. to play, there's a lot of things that should that colleges should be doing, especially with all the money that they're making off these athletes to prepare them so that if they don't make it, they, they're still set up, you know, for success. You know, we're not saying, I'm not saying that you have to hold an 18, 20 or 21 year old's hand, but you can provide them the tools in order to do the work. You know, and I think at the end of the day, that's all, that's all athletes want is the tools. You give us the tools because of the way that we worked all our life. Our work ethic is going to get us to that point if you give us the tools. It's just, mm-hmm. I mean, it's plain and simple. Yeah, man. I feel like by now, man, this is 2021. Like, the avenues that we got and the avenues that's been built right now, it's almost inexcusable. Like I said, man, you got so many resources now. Nobody's out of touch. You know what I'm saying? You can do anything from via Zoom call. It don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? So to set up programs or set up something, you know what I'm saying, for these guys, you know, and even if it is the point zero zero whatever percent, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if it's only, you know, four guys on your team that you feel like actually got a legitimate shot. Take those four guys, man, set them up with somebody, you know what I'm saying, or something like that or whatever. Maybe have a, uh, you know, I understand they got these pro, you know, whatever those are supposed to be. But, you know, so they got these, you know, these, you know, these liaisons and so forth at these schools. But at the end of the day, like I said, there has to be a process to, you know, saying give these guys an opportunity to be successful. And that part to me is, you know, we see it steadily failing all the time where guys get lost, guys get lost within their rookie year, all of a sudden they're out the league, you know, they're not doing making the best decisions, even with their money, when it comes to family, friends, all these things. And I don't feel like there's not enough stuff that's taking place, you know what I'm saying, in that regard um, to try to help these guys, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these guys are going out there not knowing, and this is the first time even seeing this, type, one, seeing that type of money, but two, even having their own money, you know what I'm saying, yeah. just being honest. They've always been dependent on somebody else their whole life. So now to have your own and something that you actually control, you know what I'm saying? Now you got an actual bank account that actually got a comma in it. It just looks a little different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you're not eating a cup that's of noodles you, no more. <laughs> and that's how you know a coach. That's how you know if a coach is really like really there for you. If you think if that that coach is really there for you, because like Bo said, it, he didn't know anything about the CFL. Correct. That's the CFL has been around longer than the NFL. So if I'm a coach in college and I have individuals that I know that want to ne- go play at the next level. I'm going to expose them to every avenue that they can in order to get there, whether it's NFL, CFL, XFL, whatever arena league. Hey, I'm going to, Hey, these are all the options that you have. Mm -hmm. Look up, research them. I'm giving you this information now. So look up, look them up. You know, that would be great. It would be awesome for a coach to do that for his, Mm -hmm. you know, for his college athletes. Absolutely. And I think the ratio at that point, you know, as far as the success of the athlete, it would change dramatically. You, know yes. saying, you don't have all these, you know what I'm saying, these bad stories of not even necessarily guys just going broke, just guys that are just making bad decisions, like I said, on and off the field in general. Uh, I think it's just a better preparation. Um, and obviously it's something that may be, you know, lacking from at home. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, if they can't get it there, you should be a next secondary resource. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest. Like we, you know, from us in our experience, we spend 90 percent of our time with these guys yep. like it's just the reality like we spend 90 percent of our time with them all the time so they have a bigger impact as some you know for some people um that might be their only person that maybe can make an impact you know some people have you know other you know discrepancies and so forth but at the end of the day it's like man you have an opportunity man to get someone to be successful that can now you know what I'm saying obviously develop whatever it is they need to and then let it carry on to the next guy you know what I'm saying? The next senior, the next junior, or whoever else. Now you got a program going. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that guy comes back and develops a program at your school that now can help the next guy. And I don't see that enough uh, happening. You know what I'm saying? I don't see enough, you know, guys, you know, putting themselves in that position. And, you know what I'm saying? That's where I feel like, you know, we're still dealing with those hardships steadily over and over and over. Um, it's just something that I think needs to change. Um, from you guys playing, you know, and now, you know, going to the parts of the prime of you guys' career, 
when you look back now, like, what do you think is some of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to being a professional athlete? Like, I mean, obviously, you know, so everybody has their own perspective of what a, a professional athlete should look like, how they should maneuver, you know, what they should be involved in, what they shouldn't. Oh, a professional athlete is supposed to do this, you know, or he's supposed to look like this, or he's supposed to act like this. Like, we see that all the time. And we see it with the biggest names. You know, we've seen it with, even with LeBron, you know, so even going away from football. I mean, you can't, you know, be in, you know, you can't, you know, shut up and dribble. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. we've seen all kinds of things. But what is, you, to you, like, if I would say one or two things, you know what I'm saying, that's the biggest misconception that you've seen, or maybe even that you dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are those two things or, you know, that you feel like is just the biggest that just made the, you know, that you really had to endure and was like, man, you know, this is, this is just out of whack. I yeah, I mean, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. No, I was going to say, I just, I just hate when, when, when people don't think that professional athletes are regular human beings. Like we do. Yes. We, you see us on TV and we get paid money to play a sport or throw a football, however. You, but I put my pants on the same way you do. So I have, I have an opinion just like you do. It's like, well, if something happens, you shouldn't say anything. Well, why not? When I'm, I'm you. All I do, I just put a, I just put a uniform on to go play on on the weekends, you know. But at the same time, you put a uniform on to go to work. I just hate when when people in the in the what's the word I'm looking for in the media, not even the media, but just the 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 people in society have this thing, this misconception of if you decide to become a professional athlete, that means that you give up who you are personally. Like you can't be, I can't be Kevin Glenn because I play football. No, I, I mean I can. That's that's who I am. I am Kevin Glenn first, not the football player. He's John Bowman first, not the not the football player. And that's where I think that that was the biggest thing with me, because I was a person who I think at times. Kind of bit my tongue. And this is and this this is like the the one thing that I. I don't not not that I wish I could take back, but there's there's some there's points in my career that where I think. Now, man, I should have said something, but I didn't because it was more so I was worried about, damn, what is what is what is the outside world going to think? You know, to where it got to where it got to other points in my when I got older, it was like I could care less what you think. <laughs> and maybe that was the it was either the maturity or the or the or I was comfortable a little bit. <laughs> Once I got <laughs> into a certain spot to where I was like, it's whatever. You know, I've been traded. I've been cut. You can do what you want to do. I can say what I want to say. But that was the whole my thing, biggest thing, the misconception of an athlete is an athlete first and then a person. No, we're person first, then the athlete. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, like we pay our taxes. And in most of our cases, we pay more taxes than anybody. You know, some of us pay two taxes. So, like. <laughs> just that that part of like people just thinking you got to be segmented to one thing and and like from a family aspect like everybody think you're rich you know what I mean and 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 I don't want to always talk about money with athletes because you know it's a it's a big thing but I get it like one of us get played to pay to play sports and, and you got to go to work but that don't mean I'm rich you know what I mean I can I can show you my contract and then I show you the exchange rate and then I to show you the tax rate in, in Quebec. So, 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 like everybody, family members need to ease up because, like, just because somebody plays pro doesn't mean they have to do something for you. You know what I mean? I don't have to buy you a car. I don't have to go out and and pay five hundred above asking for for some retail Jordans. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I shouldn't have to just because I play sports. But it, you you took the thunder on that. Just the misconception that people think. But like you just play football or you just dribble or you just uh, curl like, uh, like what sports are allowed to talk? <laughs> I mean, they pick and choose. They let baseball players say stuff. They let golf players say one thing. They let football players talk about one thing. Like, no, we should be able to talk about it. I got my degree. Like we we all went to school. And the main people that are like uh, keyboard heroes, show me your diploma. What, what, what you get your degree in? 
and you stick to that. You know what I mean? I got my degree in marketing. Let me talk about something. So, right. I'm with you on that too. Yeah, I like that. Like, <laughs> what you get your degree in? So you should just keep <laughs> talking about that. You can't talk about sports because you didn't get a degree in sports. Exactly. That's just, yeah, that was one of them things, man. I was just, I used to be like, man, like, they, they really think that we can't, like you said, I got my degree. Like, I can't speak on something. You know, I'm so. Here. You got your degree in football. <laughs> that's, that's that's <laughs> you got that's your degree crazy. in football, man. That's how you. I mean, I, I mean, just to be honest, like that's how you start feeling after a while. Like the more conversations that you have, and the more positions you get put in, and I feel like obviously with us being able to be successful, we got put in a lot of different positions than the common general player, right? You know, so whether that's through sponsorship dinners and all that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna be honest, some of those dinners and some of those things, like you really start feeling a certain way at times because I've actually heard people talk to some players as if. They're just football guys. Like, it's almost like, you know what I'm saying, like putting them down to some degree. Like, they look at you just like as that, and they put you in this box. And then when you hit them with something else that is outside of that frame, they almost look at you as they're surprised that you actually have the brain capacity, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, to, to have this type of conversation. Like, And I've seen it. Like, I, I sit there, I'm like, you're surprised that I'm actually, you know, like I can actually compute this, right? Like, you know, yeah. like, like it's almost a, a surprise and a shock. And, you know, like I said, to be able to have more opportunities to actually, you know, be able to expose that. You know, I think that's very, you know, what I'm saying crucial right now at this point, because right now, you know, we're living in an era where, you know, every, you know, saying dude, that's an athlete, man, is boxed in. You know, what I'm saying if you don't got the the 17 million followers of LeBron or, you know, what I'm saying or this many followers of this guy or so forth or whatever, if you're even the the the, the last man on the roster. Like, you still have a different avenue, you know what I'm saying, and a different, obviously, media spectrum than the common general person. I feel like, man, it's also very crucial and imperative for you to actually show your voice, too, because at the end of the day, you can reach somebody that, obviously, the general person can't. But, you know, you need to be able to expose that and show that athletes, you know what I'm saying, obviously have a different, you know, a different perspective of life in general. And like I said, we don't expose it enough. We get kind of just only football-related topics, issues, and so forth. And I feel like, man, now it puts us in a box and now, you know, it's hard to, you know, so obviously get away from those things once it's post-career or even during career. Yeah. I think organizations can do, can play a big part in that then by, by putting their players in a different light than just being a football player. But that's mm -hmm. what they think. Oh, we, I pay you a contract to go out there and throw touchdowns or get interceptions or get sacks. Well, no, you also pay me. And it says it in the contract to represent the club. So you can rep you can put me in positions to where I'm representing the club outside of the stuff on the field. Mm -hmm. Organizations can play a big part in that. And then it also can help guys with that transitioning when they're actually done. When you put mm -hmm. them in that kind of situation while they're playing, because we spend 90 to 95 percent of our time getting prepared to play or playing, mm -hmm. that you don't have time to do all that other stuff. But if the comp but if the organizations you know, we'll, we'll put their money behind the, the players in that aspect. I mean, it, it could it could it could really help them in that transition mode. No, absolutely. And, because, I mean, let's be honest. Most 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 people are getting jobs based off of networking alone. It ain't because yeah. they're going exactly. out there filling yeah. out the general application. <laughs> I mean, it just ain't happening right yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> and, and 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 guys need to 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 not accept it. You know, a lot of athletes when they're talking at these dinners, like you were saying, and, and at a golf course, whatever, and somebody only talks to them about sports or say, hey, now we're going to talk about this over here. Don't accept it. Say, hey, no, I can talk about that, too. And, 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 and that way you, you show people instead of you just telling them, no, no, you show them like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm well versed in, in language and, and tongue and education. So let me come and interject in your conversation. You just don't say, "Oh no, just talk." We'll talk about sports. Like if they're talking about stocks, and you and you and you sit back and say, "Yeah, well, you know, so LeBron's averaging twenty five and and, and and ten. Like you got to step away. Like players also have to grow too yeah. and show the community, show the world. Like I'm more. I can do other things. You know." No, nah, yeah, nah, definitely got to take more accountability in that. Like I said, man, we got to change the dynamic ourselves too. So, I mean, like I said, I think that's all 
like I said, it all goes hand in hand. And like I said, yep. if you got to turn down some stuff or whatever, you know what I'm saying, to actually prove a point sometime, I mean, it comes along with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like, you know, CFL-wise, you know, guys, uh, especially some of the younger guys that maybe don't have that third, fourth, fifth contract, they're just taking whatever. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, this mm-hmm. is a paying gig, so go get it. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. And they're just trying to get it. But at the same extent, I mean, if you're trying to build something, you know what I'm saying, or you're trying to, like I said, set the new stage or set the new standard, sometimes, man, you got to, you know, take a stance that maybe isn't, you know what I'm saying, look, you know, greatly upon you know everybody else around you hey man you got to just step you know you got to step outside the box and right. it's hard for guys you know what I'm saying to do that man it's hard you know based off of status based off of you know saying like i said their income whatever the mm-hmm. case may be um when it comes to, of the meat you know, of the sure. outside world i gotta keep up this perception mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah no, I know and, that. and you hit the nail on the head kevin when you say comfortability like how comfortable am i in my situation am i comfortable enough to talk am i a starter you know, like you just said, Ryan, I'm on my second, third contract on my rookie deal, you mm-hmm. know, so it's it, it, like a lot of it is on the player too, or on the athlete to, to break that kind of mold and not just accept being athlete and that's it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so it, like you guys made great points on that. Yeah, no, nah, nah, definitely got to change the standard, man, as far as that go. As far as in you guys' career, though, man, if you was to pinpoint maybe one or two of the biggest mistakes <laughs> that you made, though, biggest mistakes. All right. So, like I said, man, it could be a mixture of things, man. It could be financial. Outside the football? Outside of football? Yeah. <laughs> it could be anything. It could be anything. It could be anything. Because I mean, because my thing is, you know what, to be funny, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, I feel like people don't understand how much that goes hand in hand. Like, I knew dudes that were making – the worst decisions off the field that play such a bigger factor for them on the field. It's just the truth of the matter. Like these dudes had the best potential to be this, you know, they could have had eight, nine, 10 year careers, but their off the field decisions were just destroying them. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, as far as that goes. And it could be a mixture of things, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? Just for you guys, you know what I'm saying? To shed some light on what, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a few things. If you guys are willing to be transparent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna just throw that out there. You know what I'm saying? If you can say one or two things, the biggest mistakes or whatever that maybe you could have made. And it could have been, like I said, it could be a team decision. It could be a, you know, it could be anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like what, what, what would you really pinpoint as like, you know what? That that wasn't the best move, man. Like, like I, I regret that one. You know, but I'm gonna start with you because you're laughing too hard, man. So I'm gonna. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm gonna preface this statement by saying I haven't made a lot of bad choices but i've made some stupid ones i i go back to my rookie year yeah you know i mean like when you when you were raised in north carolina and rockingham north carolina and you go to montreal quebec and you see the lights and see the pretty women and, and hear the rustle and the bustle you know a lot of people where i'm from don't know what you know saint laurent street is on on during grand prix so, so, so like, 06, I was in the streets every day. Like, like I want to say, like, honestly, five five nights a week. Only nights I wouldn't go out was the night before the game and, and probably, like, a day two or something like that. But we used to go out. I had, to, like, Neilon Green, who you probably play with, mm-hmm. Kevin. Uh, he, he, he was single at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was he was he was a backup quarterback, and he said, "I'm never getting in." So <laughs> AC's taking every rep. So Neilon mm-hmm. used to have us out every day, and 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 it kind of, it didn't hurt my on field because like I was like, once you get a taste, like either the breaks you or makes you like I'm mm-hmm. go- I want this, so I'm going to keep fighting, even though I'm burning the candle at both ends. I'm going to still fight, but definitely running the streets in in '06. And not saving money, and like I remember after my rookie year, like I probably had like five hundred dollars in the bank, and if it wasn't for Jim Pop uh, signing me back that year and us going to the Grey Cup, I would have went back home and stayed with my 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 auntie. So so uh, I definitely fell into the trap of keeping up with the older guys and partying and stuff like that. But fortunately for me, I learned early. And I was on the team that was pretty loaded. So, like, my mistakes weren't glaring. Like, mm-hmm. like if I made a mistake, they'd be like, oh, it's a rookie. He'll be fine. And so Chris Jones took it easy on me. But um, if I can go back and change anything, like, I, I definitely wouldn't do as much as I did 
uh, in 06. Mm -hmm. And like, I still have fun, but I just, like, I had, I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so. Hey, we all played in Montreal. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I got two. I got a, I got a, I got a on the field one. That is not probably as good as both, but I got an off the field one, rookie year, money, money thing. All right. So mm -hmm. Omar Evans, real good friends with Sean Springs, mm -hmm. their best friend. Okay. So we go play BC one day, one week, and Sean comes up to the game. He's playing in Seattle at the time. He comes up our rookie year to catch the game. We go to the game. We go out afterwards. And he got this Yukon Denali. It was a Yukon <laughs> Tahoe or something, Denali. I'm just like, man, I got to have this truck. <laughs> I, ain't, hey, I am not putting into, into to, uh, I'm not trying to put in my mind, like, this is Sean Spring. This boy played in the NFL for some years now. Making money. Millions of dollars. <laughs> he can afford that truck, right? <laughs> so, I can do. My rookie year, I go home and I get a Yukon Denali. <laughs> that's one of the stupidest decisions that I ever made. <laughs> the only smart thing is about it is that I bought it and not didn't lease it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but man, you talk about a note as a rookie in Canada. <laughs> then I went back to school in the off season, so I had to work. Mm -hmm. I, and I mean, I just did so much to try to keep that to to, to pay that note, man. But that was a, that was one of them that was one of them dumb money decisions. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with John, the Joneses. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to look at what Sean Springs driving. Tell me something I want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got it though. Hey, but I paid for it. Hey, I paid for it. Hey, that that money could have really been used to for like some man. investments, a rental property, or something. Anything. But uh. Yeah, that one. And then the other one on the field one is listening to Coach Barry, Doug Barry, in the, oh, Eastern, Winnipeg? Final, the Eastern Final when I was in Winnipeg. We was playing Toronto. That's when I broke my arm. Broke uh -oh. and I don't know if anybody knows this, but we call the timeout. We get down to, like, the five-yard line. Quarter changes. We walk into the other end in the sky dome. And he's walking up the sidelines. And he's like, we're going to call we're going to call zone, but you should pull it. Pull it and you gonna you gonna run you gonna walk in you gonna walk in I'm like ah, I don't know they ain't really been they ain't really been <laughs> rushing the edge like that yeah. in the back he's like no I'm telling you pull it pull it pull it it's it's, it's gonna be there and uh, Doug gonna probably be mad at me when when he, when this airs but <laughs> we get down there hike the ball I go to try to pull it and it's a fumble and that's when I try to do dive on the ball Kevin Ivan hit my arm and broke it. Because I definitely, and everybody knows to this day, if I would have played in that Grey Cup game, we'd have won it against Saskatchewan. But listening, <laughs> listening to Doug Berry, I shouldn't have did it that time. Every other time you was right, Doug, a, I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have listened to you that time, Doug. <laughs> and that that was that was your only, wasn't that one of your only Grey Cups? That you no, the other, one was, uh, the other one was 2012. Uh, Calgary. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 100th Grey Cup. They yeah. set that one up. That was the year Ricky Ray got traded from Edmonton to Toronto. Mm -hmm. Who takes that trade? Yeah, Come they on. hosted it and everything. That's when he was in Calgary. I was hosting the Grey Cup that year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. I remember. I remember you getting hurt, man. That that actually like I I didn't I really didn't care about CFL players back then, and like I probably still don't care about many now. Like when I was playing, <laughs> but like I, I was you no. Can't I, say I, that. I meant like I was hurt. Like you can't say that. Like, I know. No, I know what he's. I know what he. I know what he means. But about, everybody else don't. That's my problem. <laughs> everybody else don't know. And you on the PA, you can't say that. No, no, I'm the VP of the union. I can't say that. <laughs> like I care about everybody, but like when I was playing, I, I didn't care in my mind. Like, oh man, he got hurt. Yeah, you know I mean? I but I remember seeing that, and I was like, dang, like it broke my heart. And no. I was like, man, that brother, that that sucks. You know what I mean, that just was, that, that close. Sucks, man. That close. So, it was tough though. Yeah, now nah, that sucked though, now nah, for real. Because I was like, man, I wanted y'all to be sad so bad because they came to BC and beat us in the final. Yeah. And we thought we was going to win everything. That's when we had, you know, everybody or whatever else. So we thought we was going to do, you know, run it back again. And they came out. I was like, oh, well, they're going to lose next week. And man, that was, that was, a, that would have been a two peak. That would have been, y'all would have been a second year in a row. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, that was, that was, that was 07. Yep, 07. 07. 
Because y'all yeah. wanted the year before in Winnipeg 06. Yep. They, no, nah, they, 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 hold on. We can yeah, like, that's, get that's off topic. We, we would have stumped well, them boys. They got, we got we stumped Montreal. We stumped no. them in 06. Blew them out. We had we, Chip Cox recover the fumble. Sorry for bringing it up. About to take it to the house. They hey, blew man. the whistle inadvertently. And he would have got caught. the ball and said, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to blow the whistle. And then Robert Edwards fumbles on the one-yard line. There's no way you all supposed to win that game. Listen, all I know is, do, do I need to go get my ring? <laughs> no, I'm sorry for bringing that up because he gonna get mad at me for bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, they won, but like this. Right, I guess what it is. Like, like I said, the better team won. Talk. The better team won. That, the better that, team won. It's all right. Don't worry about. It. We're talking about just another day. Another day. Another day. Yes. Uh, another day. Another day. Uh, I mean, since we're still reflecting on career wise and things like that, man. Um, like I said, this show is about diversity and so forth. Um. What are some of the biggest diversity issues you think you faced as a player? Um, you know, whether that's within the locker room, whether that's off the field. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of things that go unnoticed uh, when it comes to like even like you talked about marketing, you know, how they market you as a player, the positions that they put you in. You know, say how much does that play a factor, you know, within that as well? Um, I feel like this is a subject that doesn't get talked about enough uh, from a player standpoint. Um, I don't think there's enough transparency in it with it as well, because people are afraid of the backlash or afraid of maybe the next opportunity. Um, you don't get enough guys to talk about it while they're in the prime of their career. Um, a lot of times you find guys that might talk about it post career. Um, but like I said, for me, it's more so to share some life for guys that are also playing. I feel like it's very crucial, you know what I'm saying for that. So if you could touch on maybe one thing or, you know, sir, you know, two things, you know, um, that are some of the things that you face or some of the things that you've seen, I mean, it don't even have to be you. I mean, things that you see happen to somebody else. You know, saying I was maybe at a prime, you know, prime spot in their career. Um, what are some of the things that you've seen, you know, or maybe continuously see happening around the CFL or even NFL game? Guys that you know as well. Um, like I said, we have viewers from every aspect. So, yeah. you know, some of the diversity issues that you see that's happening within organizations, within teammates, uh, within the marketing aspect. Just what are some of the things that you think that you've seen and, you know, that you know that you could touch on from your own experience that you feel like, you know, say you have to face as a player? Uh, and, and and I'll be brief because I know Kevin, you know, being a black quarterback, you guys have had it the worst. Uh, so I'll be brief. I'll just say, like, I played a long time and 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 and, and I didn't get from I know I don't I don't play a position where my color matters or whatever matters. I just play a position where if you're good, you're going to get you're going to get the shine. So I play defense. Man. If I sat the quarterback, I'm going to get noticed. So it's not hard for me to get noticed at that, but it's it's uh I feel like a lot of leagues reward clowns and the louder you are or the funny you are or the more mm -hmm. dirt you kick up on people, that's that's who leagues, especially in our little league where they want as much clicks as they if they can get. So like I, I feel like clownism gets rewarded more than just being a professional. Being a uh, you know a, a go to work blue blue hat blue collar kind of guy, so and, and that's my time. I'll I'll, I'll I'll let Kevin speak to the rest of it. Hey, decency doesn't win at the end of the day, and that's what John is saying. Decency doesn't win. So when you're a person that go to work, do what you're supposed to do, and 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 that's it. It's like ah, nah, we want to get that guy over there that's talking trash mm -hmm. on somebody else and and creating this and. I mean, I get it. You got every, you got, there's one of those two, three of those guys on every team. But at the same time, like John is saying, why not give that exposure to the person that is also going to work doing what he has to do that doesn't want to conform, uh, conform to, to that, to the, to the clownism, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, you know, just, he is a decent, he's a decent blue collar guy, you know? So I'm with you on that one, John, um, as far as y'all know, as far as black quarterbacks, I'm for them. I think that they should be getting more, more praise and more opportunities, but they're not. And I came up in a bad era to where um, a lot of people say, hey, we don't even know how you made it. When I came out of school, you had to be white, 6'4", and a pocket passer. And I don't fit in none of that. Maybe the pocket passer, because I really wasn't a, a runner type thing. But mm -hmm. I, I came out of school to where 
got they weren't coaches organizations wasn't looking at looking at me to to play that position i luckily had the first ever professional football gm roy shivers be black the first black ever professional football gm was roy shivers and he was my gm and that's where i got the opportunity black gm black head coach black starting quarterback in saskatchewan in 2001 and you probably won't ever see that again. Mm-hmm. You, it, it'll be a long time before you ever see it again. And that's where we talk about this diversity. I think that there should be multiple organizations with this. And this is nothing against anybody else. But I just don't think that black quarterbacks always get the same, the, the same fair share that other quarterbacks. They just, we, just, we get scrutinized a little bit more uh, than others. And I've, I've lived it. You know, everybody think, oh, well, you should be you should be grateful that you had an 18 year career. You know, well, at the end of the day, I did have to do something in order to stay (laughs) relevant for 18 years. They weren't just handing me contracts to sign. Now, I've seen a lot of guys come and go. So it wasn't just like, oh, because you're Kevin Glenn, we're going to give you this contract. So I had to be doing something in order for me to stay. So it wasn't like we were just handed. Now, there are some individuals in professional football, and I'm not just going to say CFL or NFL, I'm going to say in professional football um, that have been, you know, put in a position to where uh, they've been taken care of, I would say. White quarterbacks have been taken care of at times, you know, and I've played with a couple of them in the CFL that came from the NFL, and I'm kind of just like, how did you last eight years in the NFL? But it was a, I mean, it was a, hey, this is my buddy. This is my friend. Or the starting quarterback had a very good relationship with this guy as a second stringer. I had one guy tell me, i t- never forget John Beck. John Beck told me, the way that you stay in the CFL, I mean, in the NFL, is you become very good friends with the starting quarterback. You help him out with game prep. And you never play a game. You'll have a, you'll have a 10-year career. If you never have to go in the game to show anything, this Mm -hmm. first string quarterback is going to continue to keep you wherever he goes because he's comfortable with you and his process of getting prepared every week. And I was just like 2000 and what was we 2014 and and, Mm -hmm. uh, it was 14. We were in BC. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Like I never even thought of that, how he put it. And this was coming from a white guy who I became really, really good friends with. But he was like, that's that's how you stay in that's how you stay in the NFL. I ain't got nothing to do with your ability. And that right there kind of tells you really what that lead, you know, at times what that position, quote unquote, that position is kind of looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes as black guys, as black quarterbacks, no, we want to play. Mm-hmm. We're not just trying to hold a clipboard at times. We we're competitive just because of what we've had to go through in order to get to that point. You know, mm-hmm. so we the black quarterback is very scrutinized. I mean, and I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, you might, you might air this and I might have some people blowing up my Twitter, you know, talking stuff and all this. But like you said, if you comfortable, you can say, <laughs> if you comfortable, you can say what you want to say. Cause I've lived it, man. I've been doing, I've been doing this since my freshman year in high school. And I have seen the difference. Um, at times throughout the years, through my years in quarterback and at the, in high school, through college, and in the pros. Guys who weren't even putting up the numbers that I was putting up were getting a totally different, totally different look, you know, just because I think because of sometimes their skin color. It's perspective. <laughs> I mean, it's just Everybody, and it's my and that's my opinion. That's why. Yeah. This isn't this isn't like I'm not writing a book tent day putting this and saying this is law. This is my opinion. This is because of what I've experienced. My perception in this is my reality. Mm-hmm. So if you can't respect that, then there's no really no need for us to have a conversation on Twitter when you tweet me, when you tweet me about this, <laughs> when you post this. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, you're Mr. <laughs> yeah, you're out of pocket. Man, why did you have that guy on? I'm gonna be like, hey. Man. Just what it is, man. He doesn't know anything about being a black, yeah, what does quarterback? He know? black quarterback. What does he know? <laughs> he know. <laughs> but but I tell you this, because I, I tell guys this now, like you know, coaching high school quarterbacks, and I try to tell some of the some of the guys be like, man, I just 
you know, I like it. I like being around my my people and my kind. I'm like, bro, when you get to college and you get to the pros, it's going to be plenty of times. If you make it that far, well, you're the only one in the room. There was plenty of times I was the only black guy in the room. There was one instance where we had all quarterback coach and all black quarterbacks on the, on the roster. And that was Saskatchewan in 2017. Okay. Jarius Jackson was the quarterback coach. It was me, Brandon Bridge, Vernon Adams, Marquise Williams, and I think that was it. It was five of us. I never had that. Ne- that had never happened before. I'm That's thinking crazy. the most thing to it was when I was in Saskatchewan with Roy Shivers and Danny Barrett mm. in 2001, when it was me, Marvin Graves. We had Keith Smith, though, that played at Arizona. He's a white guy. Mm. Um, like Jonathan Beasley, Ted White. This is before Ted White came over to Montreal. And uh, I think that was Don't it. Don't point at me. That was before my time. That was before your time. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it ain't that long. It ain't that long. Because <laughs> he, he might have left in, like, 04. <laughs> But but that was, you know what I'm saying? That was the only time I think that I have ever been in the quarterback room professionally with all black quarterbacks. It's crazy. Which that and it doesn't that doesn't it doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And, and that's the only position like that. Like I've it been is. in I've been in D line meetings and just speaking from a D lineman, like we had one white guy. Like it was always like one white D tackle or something like that. And like, I, like, is that how he feels? Is he is he always like, man, the white D lineman got it so hard, like we so <laughs> impressed? Like, I don't know how he feels. But that could be how he fe- that could be how he feels at the end of the day. <laughs> but that, that that was one time in my career that it was all black quarterbacks in the room with a black That's crazy. quarterback coach. It's crazy. I think we led the league in touchdowns that year too, as a team. Throwing uh, and, and, and throwing touchdowns too. Now, now, now you just add fluff on. I don't know. Go we gotta go back and check the numbers. Go back. <laughs> go back in, go back in 2017. I got some guys. I can call up some guys right now. They can. Hey, I got. I, 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 I got I don't need them on the show. I don't need I them on the show. Guys I can we call right about. now. We are. We okay. We, we add, okay. You gotta add all those five though. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm, nah. nah, I didn't get no sack. Nah, uh, yeah, I did. No, not that year. <laughs> nah, uh, nah, if I mean, as far as like I said, this is move to change, and like I said, uh, at some point, like I said, it's all about progress, and it's about uh, you know trying to give guys some type of influence or give some guys some type of perspective or shed some light, um, or even just try to help and advise. If you could give some do's and don'ts when it comes to being this professional athlete, now that you've, you know what I'm saying, like been in it and, you know, said I had a, had a chance to establish some longevity. If you could give me two do's or don'ts, like, I mean, this is something that you have to do. You know what I'm saying? Like if there's a, a must or whatever else, man, this is something that you must do either prior or during, you know what I'm saying, your career, whether if it's long live or if it's short live. And this is a, a a do not like this is absolutely like no questions asked. There's no, hey, you can't say well I had to or I you know I was forced to or whatever the case may be. If you can get one do and one don't for each one of you guys when it comes to, I guess having a successful one or even you know having an opportunity to sustain a career. If you can go one each, one each. This is like I said, this is my mood to change because this is what we you know saying got to got to get some progress going. If you give me one of each right now, what would that look like for you right now? So if, if Kevin, you were talking to you, a kid at your school right now, mm-hmm. and you was athletic director or you was whatever, a coach or whatever, and you got a kid right now that can be a draft pick or, you know, like I said, has a chance of going to the CFL and doing whatever. Right now, if, you, if he asks you, okay, coach, give me one thing that I got to do and one thing that, you know what I'm saying, that you, you're telling me right now, I got to stay away from it. I shouldn't even, you know, shouldn't even entertain it at all. What would that be right now? My do will be prepare for after football, during football. Don't wait till you're done to start thinking about what you want to do. There's enough time in the day to while you're actually playing, however long that is, two years, 10 years, 15, whatever. Think about what you want to do when you're done while you're actually playing. Because everybody's going to have to do it. 
most most guys are most guys will have to do it. You will have to work after you after you're finished playing professional football. And work and work is is a work could be different levels. You could be working for yourself. Yeah. Investing in your investor or real estate or whatever. You go on your own business. You could but but it's still something that you're actually doing. You're gonna actually have to do something after you, you know, reach that that point where to where you retire and you're and you're done playing football. So I would say, you know, think about think about what you want to do after you. I mean, what you want to do after you playing football while you're playing football. My don't. If you got your do right now, John, you can tell him your do because I'm thinking about <laughs> I'm thinking about my don't, man. It's, my it's, don't. A, it's a it's a deep question because like you know I me mean, combined, uh, we got like. 20 some years of uh well 40 years with yeah, Bill right. Ryan in there of football, pro football. Uh I'll start with my with my my don't though. I'm just gonna flip course course here. Like uh and this was taught to me, I guess, and like when I first started becoming a pro, it, my my coach was like, don't 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 be afraid to fail. Because you know, a lot of people come in there thinking they're going to go out and kill it right away <clears throat> and they don't. And then that starts a snowball effect uh, with your confidence. And we know as athletes, once your confidence goes, you know I mean? Your, 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 your swag is gone. Your clothes don't fit right. Your food don't taste right. You know, you, 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 you don't perform good at all. So my coach said, don't be afraid to fail because I'm going to tell you a secret. If you don't get a sack every pass play, you fail it. <laughs> and you know that was the way he put it to me, uh, because you know failure is a part of sports, uh, but it's how you recoup from that failure. Are you going to let the failure uh, avalanche on you, or are you going to learn from that failure and, and come out better on the end? So my don't would would be like, don't be afraid to fail, because you know in failure there's lessons learned, and and and, and it's a building block. You know how are you going to come out from that? How are you going to rebound? It's a good one. I like that. Man, man, still ain't got nothing, man. This is terrible. You're supposed to be a quarterback. You're supposed to be a quarterback. You're supposed to be a quarterback. You're supposed to be on it right now. You know what? That's one thing that that's one thing that like on the field, I'm very decisive. <laughs> I, I anticipate throws with the best of them. But in but in this kind of it's like I I don't I don't I don't anticipate a lot. <laughs> I ain't decisive. I'm like yeah. Is it you don't want to get the wrong that? lesson. I, I just don't. Yeah, it's it's just so many don'ts. But yeah. mm -hmm. damn, you stumped me with this one, bro. <laughs> I'll go with mine while you put yours together. You got it. Okay. So my my do uh, would be. Uh, accept criticism. You know what I mean? Like, accept it and roll on because no matter what we do as athletes, you're going to get criticized. You get it. You can walk down the street and trip over a branch and people are like, oh, did you see the way he tripped over the branch? You know what I mean? It don't matter what you do. So just learn, like, accept criticism. Uh, use it as a motivator and and, and and go off of that because if you if you think about oh everybody's talking bad about me all the time nobody's talking good about me blah 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 it's going to wear on you so accept your criticism positive and negative because people only accept the positive I accept the negative too and, and use it so uh, accept your criticism accept your criticism and, and and use that thing so I don't know why I didn't notice you 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 don't. And all you gotta do is think of you you hit me when you said the, the criticism, but go back to yourself. What is it that I didn't let happen? I didn't let anybody, don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. Every level that I played at, it was basically in high school. Oh, he would never play at the next level at the at that position. He's too short. Uh no school is gonna want him to play quarterback. I played in college. And college, oh, he will never play at the next level. Scouts come in. We want to change our position, the defensive back and wide receiver. I've never played these two positions in my life. Seriously, at the at the highest level, professional, I can't. I'm not about to do that. And then I go on and have an 18-year career. So 
Don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do it. When those, yeah, people, when those people tell you that you can't, you use that as fuel to push yourself forward and to prove them wrong. Because that's basically what I that's basically what I did at every level. Because that's what everybody was telling me. The criticism. The criticism was, oh, he can't do this and he's not gonna be able to do that. And it was all based off of like things that were like out of my control. Height, you know, color. They this is a black quarterback. No, it's not gonna happen. He's not tall enough, you know. So at the end of the day, I didn't I didn't let nobody tell me that I couldn't do it. And I actually made it. Yeah, no, nah, one thing I'm mad on as far as a don't, I'm gonna leave the dudes alone. I mean, because I can go forever <laughs> on them, obviously, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. <laughs> one, well, what I will say, dude, one do I am gonna say is man, enjoy your career though. Mm. Like, that's my thing, man. It, I mean, there, there's one thing that I would want to take back to some degree was the fact that all of us on here have played a long time. Sometimes we don't embrace the moments that we have all the time because we're just going along at a fast pace, right? Yeah. And you're just going, and it's going fast, right? It's going fast. And, you know, that's something that I had to touch on now or whatever else because uh, there's a couple people I know now that's playing and so forth, and, you know, they're going into their sixth, seventh year and things like that. And I keep telling them, like, hey, man, when you have a moment, that and you got to embrace that joint, man. Like, cause you know, it's going fast. And before you know what it, it's over and you're like, yeah, I remember that one time, but you didn't really get to take it all in. You know what I'm saying? In the moment, because you're just so used to moving fast pace and on to the next, this, and you know, whatever else. And all these things just, you know, coming left and right. So when you got a chance, man, then, you know, there's going to be, if you play long enough, you're going to have about four or five real pivotal moments that you're like, yeah, man, that was it. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't have the opportunity to embrace those, man, then you kind of feel like you just missed out on everything that came along with it. Like, you still got it, but you didn't get it all. You know what I'm right. saying? And you earned that right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you earned that right. So you got to be able to embrace and enjoy your career because you already beat the odds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know what I'm saying? You, you got to take the blessing, man. So you got to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the real. My biggest don't is, I feel like, especially us as black players, we have a problem saying, I don't know. And accepting that. Mm. I don't have all the answers. I, I, I need some help. That's my biggest don't, man. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Because if you don't know, you don't know. Like, it's just fine. Like, I'm not going to say I had the best financial, you know what I'm saying, like, literacy when I came into the league. Like, there's no way hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or whatever. So, so, shoot, if I need help, shit, I need help. Like, it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to follow somebody to TD to TD Bank to set up a bank account. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know where the hell I was going. You know what I'm saying? At camp. And we was getting $21 a week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We was getting 20 in a loony. <laughs> we were getting 20 in a loony. I was spending half of that on Gatorades and, and snacks for the you know for the room. Hey, like <laughs> we had a chicken wing place right across the street. Man. <laughs> Come on, man. The only hey. thing that saved me, man, my rookie year, we was in Chilliwack, and we actually, like, was staying at a hotel. So the food wasn't as bad, but there was a save on food right across the street. Man, I was over there every week, just <laughs> 20 Gatorades, Doritos, Cheetos, putting $10 <laughs> in that TD account. Like, man, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> but it's what it was. But my thing is at the same extent, like, it's okay to say I don't know. Because my thing is, one, a lot of, you know, guys come, you know, saying in these situations with not the best guidance, not the best preparation. Um, haven't been able to, you know what I'm saying, get molded by anybody that maybe had a past experience right. um, so forth. So, you know, if you don't know, if you, didn't have, if you don't have all the answers, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? If you got to seek out some help, if you got to, you know what I'm saying, seek out, you know, some somebody to actually guide you and get everything in place. And then that way now you're starting to learn for yourself or someone that's going to teach you. Honestly, man, the biggest, the, one of the biggest moments for me, I want to say it was my second year was Dave Dickinson. I'll never forget Dave was the biggest saver I've ever seen in my life when it comes to saving. <laughs> it was despicable, right? Despicable. I couldn't stand it. Don't get me wrong. Dave was making good money, but it was despicable. Dave would get his check, just throw it in his locker. Wouldn't even think about cashing. Everybody else, you know, jetting to the bank as soon as they got it. <laughs> I'll never forget. I come in the locker room. Dave was like, RP, man, how many pairs of shoes do you have? And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, man, I see you with a different pair of shoes every, every week. I'm like, Man, I don't know, man. And mind you, his locker is open. I see hella envelopes in there. Hella envelopes. Ain't none of them cash. Just straight checks or whatever, right? <laughs> and he was like, man, you know what, man? If you if you match your, your pension, 
some of the time or whatever, this, that, and other, whatever else, man, you'd probably be pretty well off. And I didn't really understand what the hell he meant at that time. That next following year, I went to our account. I said, listen, man, every check they I need it. you to take out this, you know what I'm saying, this pension amount every single time. And that helped me, man. Like, I literally ended up doing that from that year all the way until I was done. Like, but it took somebody else, you know what I'm saying, like somebody else that, one, you know what I'm saying, I, I never would have thought Dave Dixon would have, you know, been the person to tell me that. You know what I'm saying, I would have, you know what I'm saying, thought maybe somebody else. But the fact that, you know, so I was willing to listen, willing to say, okay, yeah, I didn't know, or willing to say, okay, man, you know what I mean? It's coming from somebody that I see is going to probably be well off when it's all said and done, who's been playing a long time and so forth. Like, it's okay to accept that. And we have a hard time sometimes accepting someone as one, one, someone is telling us something. Two, you know what I'm saying, accepting the fact that we don't know everything, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, like I said, we get into this macho type of thing sometimes. And at the end of the day, man, like I said, man, we're supposed to be growing every day. And we're supposed to be learning something new when we have the opportunity. But we can't put up these brick walls, man. So that's my biggest don't, man. Hey, man, if you don't know something, man, just say, hey, man, I don't know. Can you help me? You know what I'm saying, man? You you got some sources for me. You got a a network for me that's going to, you know, get me, you know what I'm saying, to another, you know what I'm saying, to another successful platform. Because at the end of the day, just like Kev said, man, everybody's career has got to come to an end at some point. I I don't care how good you think you were. At some point, man, father time is going to kick in. Whether that's, you know, saying based off of body and age or just organization wants to go a different way. So now my thing is now what do you got now? And you got to have something, man. You got to have something, man. That's why, man, you know what I'm saying, when it comes to post-career, when it gets, you know, comes to post-career uh, preparation, like I said, I actually want to have another second part to this, man, with you two, man, uh, because I feel like you guys got a lot of value to bring to that as well. Obviously for, you know, Stan Bo, obviously, you know what I'm saying, he got to get prepared for it at some point. You know what I'm saying? You can't play forever, brother. I'm just saying. Like, I'm done. Years, I'm not listening to you. So I'm done. Like, when you're done in two, three years or whatever that is, <laughs> no, man, you, hey, you, didn't, him, man. you didn't believe you didn't believe it either. Then I wasn't gonna say nothing, but I was I'm like, I'm not, I'm not listening to him. He coming. What do you mean? What do you want me to do? So you really to do what you normally I'm do. You, you keep lying. So you go ahead and lie <laughs> and sign another deal. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You just, my thing, listen, I'm like, if you want to miss training camp, cool. I ain't tripping. I don't play. <laughs> if you want to play Brett far, do your Brett far. I'm, I'm just, done playing. Like, I'm, my, my, our careers is over, brothers. I told man, everybody. Don't you dare I, put that in plural. Don't you dare do that. <laughs> training camp is what makes guys retire. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, but listen, though, but because of COVID, but listen, though, but because of COVID, but because of COVID, we might not even have no preseason, really. You know what I'm saying? So if he just missed a little bit of the training camp, he got put on preseason games. He, shoot, he at that does. point, man, you know what I'm saying? If the right system comes, he might only have to play maybe 12 games, 14 games. He might. I, 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 I didn't I'm not not even listen to RP, y'all. RP, I didn't believe it either, but I wasn't going to say nothing. But I, I, didn't, listen I, to him. I was like, ah, this, he don't want to go to training camp. That's it. So I, I, I never wanted to go to – I didn't want to go to training camp my rookie year. But this is perfect. <laughs> off the COVID, off the COVID – this is perfect to just say, ah, yeah, I'm going to retire. And then after training camp, bang, yeah. get them back. Let me, let me, let right this a, bunch, a bunch of guys retired this week. Uh, yeah, I mean, let me, let us, let us go, man. All right. Nah, nah, it, it ain't the same start. situation. No. After the first three, four weeks and the season started, then I'll be like, <laughs> I got, I got, a, I got a note. I but even then, Because I got, when I retired, I got calls. I got calls in August. Yeah. Over. And hey, yeah. I'll tell you this, Danny McManus. <laughs> Danny McManus called me. He almost got me up off of that couch, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's different though. It it's is different. It's, it's a different, it's a different position, different dynamic. It is, it is. I, I will tell you that it is. I'm done. All I'm right. fine with that. We, now listen, we, we done. Let 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 the organization have a major injury. Six <laughs> games left. <laughs> Hey, well, I mean, come they, out there with that. Hey, with, Montreal, Montreal he gonna come out there with that damn place. shield on. Montreal sitting in first place. <laughs> hey. Montreal just chose not to resign me, so like, <laughs> if they sitting in first, they ain't gonna bring me back. Wow, we done, man. We well, good, look, brothers. I put it like this. All right. Hey, listen, man. I'm gonna put you on our neg list. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna put you on our neg list. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, something season. happened. Make it through a whole season with being retired first because he's going to get some calls. Guaranteed. I just, Guaranteed. I just went the whole season being retired. Everybody went the whole season being retired. <laughs> everybody was retired. <laughs> everybody. everybody. Everybody coming out of everybody retirement. Everybody was retired. <laughs> Guaranteed. 
Oh. Yeah, but nah, seriously though, nah, like I said, man, I want to have you guys back, man. Um, like I said, man, for a part two of this, man, when it comes to, like I said, man, post-career, just the preparation. Uh, I think you guys both have different aspects, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, Kev, you've been retired for a little while now, along with myself. Uh, you know, Bo's getting ready for it in two more years. So I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, we got to, you know what I'm saying, be able to shed some light on that as well, because like you talked about, I mean, there's a couple of things I want to, you know, talk about in that realm. Like, Kev, you talked about, you know, the whole aspect of getting prepared for a post-career during your career. And there's a lot of different perspectives on that. You know, some people feel like it takes away from your focus and concentration on the game. Some people feel like, you know what I'm saying, it should be just strictly tunnel vision, whatever I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole lot of different dynamics that come along with that. And I think that's something that we need to touch on because I've even seen it. And the funny thing is what I thought about is, even on video games, you see that. You know, my son plays Madden and you can do the little career mode stuff. And they ask you a question on there like, you know, do you have a different alternate route or a different or a different option, you know, if it doesn't work out. And if you answer, no, this is what I'm only about, this is what this and other, you get extra points to that character. I kid you not. Wow. You can look it up. You, I kid you not. When I first seen that, I was like, what in the hell? It's on Madden. <laughs> wow. On Madden. Is it, do you have any other alternate routes or anything else you think about doing besides football if this doesn't work out? And it, literally, if you answer, hey, no, I'm only about football. This is all I'm, you know, about blah, blah, blah. Whatever. You get like an extra like 10, 15 points to that character. Crazy. I hey, kid you not. I'm but you know what? I don't even want you, no, I don't even want you to respond on that yet. I'm going to wait till the I'm next one. I'm da- I'm, after you told me that, I'm down for part two. <laughs> I, never <laughs> say, I, I don't want you to do that yet. I don't even want you to do that yet. Like I said, I just want to throw that out there. I'm just throwing out some bait. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. I'm just throwing out some bait. Because yeah. my thing is, like I said, you're seeing it now in video games, which are a lot of the things that's molding our kids social right. media video games tv like you know say so i tell me I, I i encounter kids that their parents aren't necessarily raising them like they're being raised by other exterior things that have nothing to do with the household and it's just the way the household is being ran and that's what their attention is going to so yep. like i said man it's it's definitely coming full circle um but nevertheless man like i said man, i appreciate you guys man i appreciate you guys time i appreciate you guys coming on i'm gonna let y'all know about the next one like i said man it's definitely gonna be the next segment um, you know, saying this was the during career aspect, but you got to get ready for the post career. Um, got to get ready for the things of, you know, things that are reality. Um, one thing for sure is while we're playing, people feel like we're living in a world and living in a, a reality that they can't relate to. But like you said, man, we're human, we're human beings. And there's definitely a, a whole lot of more years after football that we still have to live. And we still have to, you know, make sure that we're in a position to be successful that we have to account for. And a lot of people don't take that into perspective. So, I want you guys to, you know what I'm saying, touch on that as well. But like I said, there's been moving to change, episode five. Really appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, Kev. Bo, till next time, man. Appreciate like I said, move to change. Let's keep it happening. All right. See you part <laughs> Impact. two. Impact. What up, RP? Let's turn it up one time. You did. We move the change. You hear what I'm saying? Real players can relate because they the ones that was playing. Be great. Be Just great. wait. We yeah. be really in the field. Really. Now we really on the mic. Speaking truly how we feel. Damn, for, for real. Screaming yeah. hut one, hut two. Huh. Tell me what you gon' do. Yeah. Coming off that edge. Only way to stop is hold only you. Way. Never let the gatekeepers control you. Never. Once you lose your voice, now they definitely know they own you. But not I. Not Rob me. Phillips coming so fly. Pick yeah. six on the way. When that ball's in the sky. They say time is money. And, and I want the why. Now I know that's a goddamn lie. Let's go. Come and get game from the the chains. Everybody love it when you move the chains. Haters hate to see me really do my thing. Move the chains, move the chains. Let's go. The, the number one podcast Move the change yeah. to my thing getting this dough You know how it go Grab you know. a seat and tune in Then tell me what you know Please. Back when T.I.P. said Get it on, on the, the flow R.P. was on B.C. Putting on a show yeah. For sure For Screaming sure. touchdown Touchdown, touchdown. Uh-huh. Everything you want now Fans be the chain gang Game every month every now month. Don't even try to front Please now don't. These new dudes be something like my son uh, now. Come on now I'm better than ever The game that we speak Gotta, gotta be clever Ball hard no matter the weather I cheese for the pics while I'm counting this cheddar uh-huh. Oh my mama boy I never will let her So you know I gotta get up and run Just, just come to... and get game from the move the chains Everybody love it when you move the chains Hey this hate to see me really do my thing Move the chains Move the chains Let's go Move the chains The number one podcast Move the chains Do my thing
come and get came from the, the chains Everybody love it when you move the chains Haters hate to see me really do my thing Move the chains, move the chains Let's go! The chase. The number one podcast. Move the chase. Do my thing.